hard to the ready. Man, I go hard, that stands hands. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Cop and Fracker. I'm joined here with some with, with a few merry men. I, I call them merry men. They're not very merry at all, actually. In all honesty, a few glum men. I should I should say. Um, but before I introduce the cast, um, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. How are we all doing? Hello, everyone. Ellis, Fahi, Krish. Hello, hello, hello. Wave to me back, brothers. Hello, Harold. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right. Before I get to get, get to ask them how they're doing, I want to get some housekeeping out of the way. So first, very first and foremost, um, if you're a Patreon member, uh, thank you so much for, for your support so far. Um, I hope you continue to support us. We have something very exciting coming this Thursday. So if you're not a Patreon member, get signed up because it's going to be amazing. We have a live show going on on Thursday. But if you do miss it, for all you Patreon members, you can you have exclusive access to it thereafter. And what it is, we're doing a cross Patreon live show to get all our reactions for all of the all of our, our squads will be set. So this is the Liverpool Liverpool podcast of Cop and Fracker, Touchline Hotspur. Mugga Mafia or Mugga, Chessy Hour and Touchy Gunas. So all those those five clubs seeing where their projections for, for the season ahead and just their overall thoughts on, on the window that they've had, transfer window. So yeah, get, get, get tuned in for that. So yeah, if you're not a Patreon member, please get signed up. That's patreon.com forward slash cop and fracker. And you can just pay three pound a month. You get access to that from as little as that, I should say. If you want some more, some more exclusive rights, then you can pay a little bit more. Um, follow our Instagram, Cop and Fracker. Follow our Twitter, Cop and Fracker. Co- follow our MySpace. Follow our LinkedIn, Cop and Fracker. Everything, every single social. Bebo, social, Bebo. Honestly, everything you can think of, we're there. Cop and Fracker. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. Now that's out of the way. Let's get into things. Um, Ellis, how are you, mate? Uh, yeah, I'm alright. I'm scrambling for my mute button. I'm not too bad, mate. Can't complain. Kind of pissed off that bank holiday weekend's over. I had one more wow. Hennessy in me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you and me both. Uh, you and me both. Chris, <laughs> how, are you, how are you doing? How are you doing, mate? Um, I've been better, but I'm not going to complain. I'm alive. Okay. We'll get into it in a bit. We'll get into it in a bit. We thank God. We thank God. Um, And last but not least, Fahi, how are you, mate? Fahi has no words to say. One second. Oh, God. If you guys didn't hear it, if you guys didn't hear it, Fahi is um Fahi is copying I I, I want to say his name wrong, but pe- was it Ped- Pedro or Pedrol? What's his name? Joseph something. Joseph something. Well, the, Joseph the guy who, Joseph, Pe- Joseph Pedro. The guy who says tic tac, tic tac. Um Fahi, I, I can imagine what you're alluding to there. I think you're counting down to the end of the transfer window. So if you if you guys listen to this, you'll probably be listening to it um in the morning or so, sometime from Wednesday onwards. It is, we're currently recording at 7:53 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon. So that is the this is the deadline of the transfer window. So Fahi has got his own live clock, much like um the, the show itself had a, a live clock of Kylian Mbappe on it, which was which was very very funny. Um, but yeah, anyway, everyone's been introduced. Let's get straight into the nitty gritty. Let's straight straight into the business. Liverpool played against Chelsea uh, on Saturday evening, and we drew one-one. It was a, it was a, it was, it was a Premier League classic for for the first half, at least. S- second half, I could, I can't, I can't say the same. But before we get into the actual performance, Ellis, I'm going to ask you initially. In fact, no, I'm going to ask you, Fahi, but I'm going to ask you initially on um, on the team lineup because mm. we saw. Um, we saw Robertson come back into the team to make his first um, f- first appearance of, of this new campaign. We saw um, Firmino start for his first time this campaign. And we saw um, Javier let maintain his position in the centre of midfield. What were your thoughts on that? Do you, do you think that Shimikash was Shimikash Jota um, were right to be do- dropped as well as Naby Keita? Um, I wouldn't say right to be dropped, but I understand why Klopp did it. Um, there were no complaints from me, to be honest. I, I 100% understand why Shimikas was dropped, um, but it could have gone either way and I would have understood. Um, in terms of Elliot, he deserved to continue starting. Um, I mean, the options on the bench haven't really started much. I think Kate has done well, but I think for this kind of game, um, having you know the raw ability of Elliot, someone who's fearless, someone who's willing to try things was needed. And in terms of Firmino, I personally would have started him in this game as well. Um, Obviously, I'm not his biggest fan right now, but I also would have started him. I think we were starting him in the expectation that Thiago Silva would play. Um, But obviously, Thiago Silva didn't start. So, um, yeah, I had no complaints, to be honest. Cool. 
Um, right. Okay, fine. That's that's the lineup out of the way. And I'm I'm not asking the rest. I'm not asking Dan and Ellis the same question. So I, I want to get, I want to give a bit more time for the actual performance to see what exactly what you guys thought. So I'm gonna start with the very first half, right? So in my opinion, it was a first half of three thirds, right? The first fifteen where we started off a lot of intensity, like we were well, on the front foot looking like we're, 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 we're going to make something happen, particularly when the ball came over um, Henderson's shoulder from a Trent from a Trent pass where he where, where he missed his left foot volley. But then Chelsea grew into the game, much like it happens, I, I feel like against our big teams, our big rivals, particularly Chelsea at Anfield. They grew into the game and they looked quite dangerous in the counter-attack and then they got their goal. And then eventually we he came back in the last five to ten minutes and we looked like we we're trying to get some more into more in, impetus and a bit more ascendancy and we and we managed to get our goal via a penalty. Um, but I, that, I, I, I said a lot there. But Ellis, what 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 are your thoughts on on the overall first first half? Um, yeah, like the way you broke it down, that's the way I saw it as well. Um, I thought that first fifteen we really took the game to Chelsea. Um, I think we tried to get that early goal we had the fans uh back in our song which was really good um but again sometimes in that first 15 you want to try and get the first goal because if you get the first goal then it knocks the cell out of your opponents um and we didn't so then that allowed chelsea to get back into the game which brings us to the second 15 like you said and that second 15 chelsea decided not decided, but they started to control the spaces a lot and they started to get into their game a bit. They hit us on a counter-attack a couple of times and they've done a really good thing where they've kept it free and free or they've kept free man um, in our half ready for that counter-attack and it caused us a few troubles. I know Mason Mount had a chance. Um, Kai Havertz had a chance where he could have put through, either was it Kante or... I think it was Kante. Kante on Mount anyway, but he, he fluffed his lines anyway. Um then I think 22nd minute they got their goal. So that really set them in good steed. Um, the last 15 of the first half, we got back into the game of passing was a bit crisp. I wanted to see a bit more. I wanted to see a bit more from the wings because I think who analyzed it when I listen, I, it was no Atkinson from the Anfield rap. Chelsea really, really um, really, really made the midfield compact and uh, we wasn't really taking advantage of the of the wings. And it was very evident. Um, I think in the in the group chat we complained about Mane. He didn't really play goal. Obviously, we'll go on to that. But he kept on coming inside. Javier had Salah kept on coming inside. Trent this new role here as he's coming inside. So everything was really compact. I, mean, I really wanted Liverpool to like attack now on the sides, but it wasn't forthcoming in that first half. But um, luckily we got the break with the red card in, in before the before the end of the first half. Overall, that's the way I saw it. Was it kind of. I think Chelsea kind of matched us and we was giving it to them, but they still held their own. Do you feel like the the the, the penalty was the right decision and the red card as well for Reese James? Uh, yeah, I do feel that. Um, the reason why I feel that is because he when when the ball's hit his fire, he's moved his arm up. So he's mm-hmm. hit the fire, he's getting in the back of the net. So you've moved your arm, so that's just deliberate. So it's handball and yeah, I can't see that's- any complaints with that. Yeah. Personally, I agree. Does Krish and Fahi, do you guys feel otherwise about that? No, no, that is like, like, like it's penalty, isn't it? You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we all agreed. Okay, um, Ellis, Ellis broke, broke the first half that I'm there, um, quite well, I think, but particularly, he mentioned something with the midfield there, Krish. What are your thoughts on that midfield performance yesterday? Because it was a bit of a weird one. We had the players that we probably wanted playing. Playing, I would say, but I, I, I won't speak for you. But but like we had, we had a decent midfield there. So how, how do you think they fared against Chelsea, or, or what was missing rather? Um, fitness first and foremost. You could see that, especially in the second half, kind of 60, 65 both Henderson and Fabinho were kind of like going off the boil a bit. Um, obviously Henderson playing on that left hand side of that midfield three didn't help matters whatsoever. He looked really out of position. It didn't look comfortable at all. Um, I thought it was odd that especially first half to kind of trick Chelsea, you know, with, with their, with their game plan, he didn't swap Elliot and, um, Henson over for certain periods. Obviously the game, you, you could tell that the game plan very much was to kind of attack their left hand side and very much kind of pin everyone on, uh, Alonso. So that was the target person that we're going to go for, you know, kind of have Elliot and Salah operate there with Trent there to play outlet balls as well. But I think in theory, the midfield was fine. But when you look at it and the midfield that I 
thought would play would be Fabinho in the six, Kaita on the left to give a bit more support to that side that's been struggling um, for the first three games. Well, I say struggling, that's a bit harsh on Shimakas because he's been playing quite well. Um, to give a bit more support to that left-hand side and Henderson as well to kind of just fill in and play how we normally would. But the one thing he definitely got wrong, and I think he's hand was forced by the fact that he had to bring Jota on in the first half so he didn't have that sub to make was he should have brought on Thiago way earlier mm-hmm. because you see how we you know you see how we performed first 10 15 in that second half and we'll obviously speak about that in a little bit more detail later on but that first 10 15 in the second half we were absolutely all over Chelsea all over them we we're moving the ball quick the tempo was right and you know we did the exact same thing last season where we brought on Thiago at half time and you see how he kind of helped influence matters in that regard. So he definitely wanted to do it as well, but we got in, he got in two weird situations as well where he wanted to bring substitutions on and he was prepping them. But both Thiago and Shimakas were waiting on the sidelines for about five minutes because the ball just did not go out of play. So that didn't help matters as well. But yeah, it's it's hard to have a go in the midfield because you know it's Henderson playing a role he's not familiar with. And Elliot, for all credit, does a fantastic job. Um, you know, he does exactly what he's been putting the team to do. He's energetic, he's pressing, he's helping with the attack. Sometimes he might be getting in the way of um, what Salah wants to do, but, you know, he's showing impetus is what you want. So I don't think you can have a go at them. I think you can only have a go at maybe just some of the rotational options towards the end of the game when we're chasing it. Okay, okay, fair enough. You know, I- I'll I'll accept that. Do you... Hmm, hmm. Do you do you feel as though we we matched up well enough, um, like man for man, midfield wise against that against that Chelsea team as we were, or do you feel like they just had a bit more quality, namely Kante, Kovacic in the second half against us? Well, I mean, second half is a difficult one because they're so, and this is where you got to give massive credit to Chelsea. They're so well drilled, um, and he brings on Kovacic and he does a fantastic job of obviously just like cleaning things up and helping to spark counter attacks too and breaking up play, which is one of the things he does extremely well. Um, the European Player of the Year was an absolute toast throughout all of that game, which was quite funny. Um, he was getting he was getting <laughs> sent, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not his biggest fan. Um, but okay, on, on your Thiago point. You said, you said he should have been brought on earlier. Do you feel as though what he did in the time that he was on the pitch warranted him having more minutes there, there, uh, there before? If you if you get what I'm trying to say, do, like, do you feel like what what he did do when, when he came on for the last what 15 minutes or so? Do you feel like that was that that was like oh okay we started to play better or was that just because we started to fizzle out at that at that point? I think everyone just gone at that point. You can see that's where the lack of kind of fitness pops in. So, um, if that game would have been kind of late October, early November, you could see where in terms of fitness and, you know, how we are as a team, how we operate, we're probably going to win that game in all honesty. But again, I think you just got to give massive credit to Chelsea and how how well they are set up. You know, Tuchel is a fantastic manager. He's drilled them really well. Um, and, you know, that game, if you would have told me that was, you know, second leg quarter final of a Champions League game where someone's chasing the way goal, it wouldn't have looked out of place. Uh, RIP to away goals, I guess, as well. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, full. Thank you, thank you for that, Chris. Fahi, I'm gonna come to you because I, I want to move on to the second half. Um, and Chris, Chris, Chris has, has, has alluded to some points in the second half. I'm trying to think what went wrong. So, so let me let me set the scene now. So, if, it, if somehow you were living under a rock, right? So we are. It's, it's the score is the score is one one. Chelsea have ten men. We're we're on we're all over them. Do you feel like we did enough in that? Well, I, I can't say first 25 minutes because first five minutes we were quite slow. Like we're just trying to get fan our way again. But the next 20 minutes, so 50 to 70 minutes, I feel like we were, we upped the tempo and we looked like we were trying to get a goal. Like we looked like we were really doing doing our best to get a goal. You feel like we did enough in that in that period? Because from what my memory, and feel free to correct me, our best chances came from long shots. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah, I, I think um, in, in the second half, between the 50th and the 70th minute, there were about seven or eight shots. I think there was a shot from Fabinho, which came close. And there were plenty of other chances as well. But yeah, between in that period um, was where we had our best chances of the second half. Um, what are you asking? Do you feel as if we did enough? Do you, yeah, do you feel as if we did enough? And or if not, what should we have now, done? Now, so we didn't do enough because obviously we didn't score. But... Um, what what I don't think worked well was the problem was we were way too reliant on that right hand side. Now what would happen is Elliot 
Salah and Trent were basically in a triangle, just interchanging between each other. And then they'd reach the byline and just cross it in. You're whipping it in to a striker that's five foot seven against, you know, two of two really strong centre backs. It's just not going to work. And that ultimately kept on happening and happening and happening. On the left hand side, Mane was isolated because obviously Robbo's just coming back into um, a, a Premier League game, right? He's not trying to do the overlap. He he's kind of sitting back. He's he's a bit more restricted. So Mane is kind of looking worse for wear because he's just there by himself trying to do too much. He's got no options beside him. Obviously, Hendo wasn't really overlapping across his side or anything like that because Hendo can't cut in and do what he needs to do. Hendo stayed in his position centrally. So Mane was left isolated on the left-hand side. So we avoided passing to him. And when we did pass to him, he wasn't doing much with it. On the right-hand side, there were three of them and they just kept passing in, in between each other and then just whipping it in. Nothing was happening. So I think why Chris said Thiago needed to come in earlier was the moment Thiago came on centrally, he was directing it left and right really quickly. He was moving the ball about rather than us dilly-dallying on the right-hand side over and over and over again. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what the problem was. There was just a lack of creativity, and the creativity we did have was all just stuck on the right side of that corner box. Agreed. And that, that's what my, my next point is. And, Fai, I'll stick with you. Why didn't we... Because there was, there was a point in the half. I feel like we all... Because because Gary Neville kept alluding to it. And it's something we always mention about when Trent is at his best, when he's keeping the defender guessing. But oh, am I going to overlap? Am I going to undercut? I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And, and, um, and we ended up doing the same thing. Salah, Salah ended up crossing the ball from, from the same position where Harvey Elliott was, mm -hmm. the same position where Trent was, etc. Mm -hmm. So why did we not spot that sooner to do to give some instructions to do something differently? We, we kept trying to whip it in, fine. Why didn't we try and create a different angle to do so if we couldn't go through the middle? Because I think ultimately Klopp thought that would work. That and you know I'm I'm not one to criticize the manager. You no, know, everyone has a has a bad day. It, it's obviously a one-one draw is what it is. But against ten men, it's obviously sometimes much harder to score when they're all sitting back. And as you saw in the second half, Chelsea were much deeper. Like Lukaku was further back. All of them were. And so obviously it's much harder to kind of break them down. And it's hard enough when they've got eleven men. But ten men, it makes it even harder if they're dropping back. But I think Klopp ultimately thought. That we could wear them down and we just didn't have it in us um and we we just seemed short of ideas in terms of on the bench who we had to kind of bring on you only really had two options to kind of really make a big difference and that was tiago and the other option was ox and ox is more like chaos merchant so if he comes on you're just hoping for him to crack a shot from somewhere there's not really much else that you could kind of hope from him um and it's kind of evident and really worrying that you know with 10 minutes to go the, the option that he decided to go with was a left back. And, you know, if, if this is apparently the squad that our manager is happy with, then boy, that's a big, big worry. If we're 1-1 against title challengers, they've got 10 men, we're at home, and with 10 minutes to go, we bring on a left back to try and change the game. That's not good. And you saw yeah. how he didn't want to commit either. Uh, they didn't want to overcommit because, you know, I think Els said about it earlier on, Chelsea in transition in that first half were really good. And, you know, we didn't want to leave, you know, man v man with just Lukaku yeah. up front because we know if they if he holds the ball up well, which he did do in certain occasions when he put uh, Kovacic through on goal, there was another chance as well. Lukaku had the other chance as well. That was it, yeah. Um, and you could see how quick they would be on the counter-attack to kind of go through on goal. So they're very risk-averse from that situation. And in terms of, you know, kind of playing it all from the right, can you blame him? Can can you blame them as a team as well? Because yeah, that no, left -hand side, like, yeah, 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 because it's that left hand side throughout the game was just. Do you know what? Yeah. What what frustrated me? Because I'll share my thoughts. What frustrated me? I've got no problem you you can you keeping the ball on our right hand side because so far this season, Trent Elliot, I've been I guess Shimikash has always he's, he's been decent as well, but Trent Elliot Salah probably look like our our brightest players, right? I think we'd agree. Mm -hmm. What bothered What bothered me is that. We can see Chelsea are playing the lowest of all low blocks that you've ever seen with, with some great centre-backs and some great defenders and a very, very well-coached team, right? However, having a, a large number of defenders back is not necessarily a good thing at any one point in time because it could just lead to more chaos. But the thing is, the problem is we were, we were, we were almost giving them a, a gal free um, jail card, like a, a gal of jail free card, rather. Like, we, 
we kept trying to cross the ball in the air, like you said, against uh, with, with our five foot seven um, forward in Jota. Why did we never try to just try a low cross where we can get like a deflection? We weren't trying to drive it in or anything. That's what that's what worried me because at one point I could see um, I could see I could see Pep Linders, I could see Klopp on the bench. I'm thinking, okay, Klopp maybe he's in the, the he's back at Anfield. It's a big game. He's in the emotions of it. Pep, at least I'm thinking, why are you not? Why is no one? How can I notice this? Why is why are we not? We didn't even we did not try one low cross in that second half, guys. Mm. Not one. I didn't see anyone get to the byline once. Um, and maybe maybe Mane did on the left hand side where he didn't eventually scuffed it with his left foot and went out for a goal kick or something. Like we didn't do anything on that side which was most fruitful. That was other than just whipping it in from some from, from some angle where that just favoured the centre backs for Chelsea. I, that that worries me. I'll be honest, that does worry me. Um, I think we saw that. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go on. No, go on. I'm, I'm finished, Charles. You go on. Yeah, yeah, I think we saw that last season, even like when we played Brighton and Burnley. Yeah, and same it things. Just, it was just the same thing. It's just like high crosses here, high crosses there. There's no variation. And it kind of annoys me as well because you've got someone like Trent, who's technically so gifted. I mean, he could, any cross in armour, he's got it. So you want to see, want to see more of that. But what really annoys me is, is that with, with low block teams, one, you've got to move the ball quickly. And I always scream it. Just move the ball as quick as possible. And you've got to make you got to make a pitch as big as possible. You need width, and, exactly. Yeah, so when you're playing against 10 men, I don't think 10 men want to run across the pitch. Nope, they don't want it. And especially they don't want it for 45 minutes. So it's kind of frustrating when you're still trying to go through the mid, go through the middle, go through the middle, go through the middle. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch. I watched like 10 minutes of uh, from eight minutes to nine minutes of the second half. But from that, from what I saw there, it was like, like we're trying so much to score a goal, but we're not doing enough. So you, you got to on the pitch, bro. Just keep on moving that ball, just keep on moving Chelsea up and down because sooner or later, you're going to get those gaps because somebody's going to fall asleep. It might be, it might be Rudiger, like it, w- it probably most likely would have been Rudiger and Alonso. So if you keep on moving it from left to right, you're going to find that gap. And Salah's going to find that gap. But unfortunately, it, it didn't work, man. So, yeah, Liverpool needs to find something something else with, with, within their armoury against um, teams like this. Yeah, agreed. I find it very weird. I saw some Marcos Alonso praise afterwards, but for the majority of the game, I saw him on the floor. Like I thought, I thought, I thought that was where we get where we'd be most most fruitful. First half, Salah was having a jolly up. I, I didn't understand why people were praising him after. I was like, what, yeah. what, what did you like? He he was their worst. He was their worst defender. Like, what are you that talking left about? Side, that left hand side, it was to be eaten, bro. Like, really, got I mean, one yeah. side of he, well, he was being praised. Alonso yeah, was being praised. Yes, he was being praised by that's, by some of the Chelsea cohort. Yeah, that's Chelsea's Chelsea. outrageous. Reese James was sent off at half time, and oh, he was Greece still James. better. He was still better yeah. than Alonso, for goodness sake. Yeah, yeah, nah, <laughs> it, it was, it was um, but, yeah. okay, fine. But yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll mark it down as a frustrating day at the office. What's most frustrating is that we're seeing this time and time again, and we thought we'd learn from what we saw last year. But here we are. Look, you know what it is, though, Harold. Let, 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 let's see, let's see the positive side of things, right? If I told you, because obviously we, we get criticized a lot for being negative, so so let's. Let's take it the other way. And I'm not trying to host or take over, Harold, but I just want to kind of interject here. Yeah? So if I told you at the start of the season, first three games, you'll get seven points out of nine. How, how would you have felt? Same way I do now. Okay. For me, we, we played the first two games we played against. Who did we play? We played Burnley and we played Norwich. That's six points for me. Mm-hmm. And I, I want to see, I want to see, actually, you know what? I'll take it. Nah, tell a lie. You, you I'm, take I'm, it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm taking Chris, it. how about yourself? Uh, you know me, I'm a massive nerd. Um, so I do that thing where I keep track of the you know corresponding fixtures from last year and see how we're doing year on year. You know, that's just me. Um, fuck off, else. So, the people on the video can see. Um, yeah, so I, I do that thing where you know, I check the year on year game. So, uh, from these reverse fixtures, uh, from last year compared to now, actually six points better off than we were. Um, so I'm always going to take that at the end of the day, but and that's with you replacing Norwich with Fulham, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we dropped two points obviously away at theirs. The game that we'd done the Discord, and our head just absolutely uh melted. When oh, boy, I'll never forget that game. <laughs> <laughs> that Sunday, that was a dark, dark <laughs> Sunday. Do, do you remember that? Come on, we were so lucky with a draw as well. Oh, my yeah, word, yeah, we were. 
Do you oh remember when that Kamara God. guy came on and we were like, oh, for Yo, fuck's sake. <laughs> he was running us ragged. <laughs> he was so crap as well. Oh, oh All right, cool. So that's Chris. Ellis, how about yourself? Seven points out of nine. Start of the season. Would you have taken that? Yeah, to be fair, I wanted nine. I was expecting nine, but yeah, I would have taken up. I just cool. So, so you know, let's 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 look at the positives, right? Seven points out of nine isn't a big deal. Now, the the, uh, the reason why we're so glum, and I think it's for obvious reasons, our our nearest one of our nearest rivals, title challengers for this season, clearly, um, we're down to ten men. <laughs> we had a whole half to break them down, and we weren't able to do it. Now, obviously, that happens sometimes in football. That's absolutely fine. But yeah. my problem was there wasn't enough, there weren't enough options on the bench to make a difference. That that is that is ultimately my problem. Tiago is number one. Yes, you bring him on. After that, I really don't know what else Klopp actually could have done. And that's this is why today at 8:16 p.m. on the 31st of August, I'm getting wound up. Because I'm like. If this is the problem right now that we're having, and now we've got Firmino injured, we don't know how long for. Journalists can say whatever they want. We've been lied to plenty of times. What the fuck are we going to do if this happens again and again? Because teams are going to come and defend in low blocks. So what what are we actually going to do? But Fahi, before before we talk about what we need to add, mm. right? I need to I need to talk about a certain person. Go on. Um. So. So we will pop that question there. We'll come back to it. I do have to mention this. So against Chelsea, we had three players who were outstandingly bad, in my own opinion. Sorry, I'm going to be negative again. Um, Jordan Henderson, Andrew Robertson, and Sadio Mane. We're going to talk about the latter, Sadio Mane. Um, I was told he had a very good preseason. I didn't watch any preseason games. So I was like, oh, okay. I was like, okay, well done, he Sadio. Did. He did. Um, but so far this season, he he doesn't look like he's he's anything better. Than, than than what he ended last season. So, guys, like that that was that that was a hall of shame. Like I'll I'll, I'll be honest. Like from if, if we're talking relatively from what we expect of someone someone like Sadio Mane, that was awful. That that was actually cr- that was so crap. Like I, I know we all love him, and it's, it's hard to it's hard to say negative things about him. But he was pants, man. So. Guys, where do we go from here? Like, chat to me. Like, where do again, we go? All right, all right, all right. Again, Harold, go, to go back to my point of what I said about Mane on that game, I am going to defend him a little bit. He was isolated. Hey. I do not think he had the support required on that left hand side. I don't think Hendo supported him for whatever reason. That's not Hendo's side. I'm not even blaming Hendo. But ultimately, on that left hand side, he didn't have the support he needed. He didn't have the left CM helping him. And Robbo was further back for obvious reasons. So, Yes, Mane didn't have the greatest performance, but he was isolated. And but that's what the, yeah, got touch. How, how about the baggy touch? How about the yeah, poor dribbling? Yeah, how about the, the bad passing, the bad decision? Well, if you're thing. doing all the work by yourself on the left wing, like, it's going to happen. Nah, I'm not having this one. Yeah, I, I, I honestly... Yeah, yeah. Because, I, because, listen, I was there, right? I'm not going to I'm not gonna play this card and be like, oh, I was at the game, I know more. But I was at the game there. And then I opened the chat. And I just saw bear man flogging Mane. And I was like, even I joined in. Even I joined in. I was like, yo, Mane was looking stinky. <laughs> yeah. But then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? After what I witnessed, do I really like, can I really be that critical on him? Like, because he was by himself on that left-hand side. He really well, was. Well, he even, was even, even, okay. Go on, take, go on now, sorry. Go on, you go on, okay. you go on. You go. Yeah. I know you, you you was there. You can see it better. But even taking when he's coming inside, usually when Mane is coming in on his right right foot, it's, mm. it's out, it was poor. Dangerous. It was poor. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So even then, he's taking one touch too many, or he's taking yeah. a wrong wrong action. If he's going on the outside, it's, it's a heavy touch. You know, he does a step over thing, flicks it with his left. It's a heavy touch, and it's gone out. So think things like that, and it's carried on from last season because I saw, I watched him pre-season I thought yeah we've got him back he's sharp yeah. he looks yeah. lean he looks you know what I'm saying he looks razor but even in that game I think he was overthinking it sometimes maybe I maybe you're right there, there is an element of he didn't have the support because Hendo was not used to playing on that left hand side so there's certain things play, players on that left hand side will do that supports Mane but Hendo's not really used to it so he, he can't really do it. so maybe that I've, both both um both sentiments can be right but I just thought yeah. that 
Fair. Fair. And I don't, I don't disagree with what you guys are saying about his boot cut touch and all, all that kind of stuff, right? But what I will say is, this isn't something we've not seen previously. Like, even when he was at his best, he used to have stages where his touch was horrific, but he would save it. Right, he would save himself, and ultimately, what would happen is the defenders would be dragged out because they wouldn't know where, who to go to. Because sometimes it looks like, ah, oh, he's gonna pass it to Robbo, but he ends up saving it himself and taking it around him. But on that game on Saturday, it was clear as day Mane was there by himself with the ball. So he's just like, okay, so I'm gonna get to the left hand side, I'm gonna cut in, and now I've got the right back and the right centre back to get past. He's overthinking it. Obviously, it's, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. But I, I feel sorry for him. And I'm laughing at something else right now because I've seen this picture of Carol, the canteen lady. <laughs> what? What's this? Uh, Carol, you got to check your phone. Listen, LFC Twitter right now is on a meltdown. These lot are creating content and flogging the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, guys, we do have a transfer window segment coming up. It seems as though everyone is in turmoil with the lack of transfer activity going on. But um, you get my point. That's what all I was trying to say about Mane. I just wanted to say the other side of things. Yeah, I, and you know what? I hear you. But the thing is, what we have lauded Mane for in the past has not been that of always oh, been great. I, I can probably only say Robbo, but great Mane performances in the big games. Like, Mane is a big game player, right? And I feel like whenever he has a big game, it's not because of like, oh, Naby Keita supporting him. Or or Wijnaldum supporting him, or it's or it's Robbo. It's because Mane has done some really good things. I didn't see one good completed dribble. Like that is worrying to me. That is where that's where my head is at. I, I, honestly, it's Sadio Mane. He has so much equity in the bank. I've got no qualms. I can give him any chances that. But fair, you know what? Let's 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 leave it and let's see a better a better Robbo and a. And that be Kato, who he's so close with as well, on that on that left hand side. And let's see what happens. Okay. Cool. Listen, let's be real. If you look at his stats, he was fucking horrific here. If you look at his pass completion, it was sixty four percent. Stuff like that is just unforgivable. Anyway, yeah, it, sorry, was, sorry. it was unforgivable when you look at it. Like, but I, I I'm I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because it's early in the season, and yeah, I feel as if he was isolated. Cool, and I'm and I'm sure there's other listen, listeners who feel like he as well. So fair enough. Um, but yeah, as, as you were mentioning, so uh, this this next part we're talking about is is is, is our is how, how we're doing so far in the season, right? So seven out of nine points. But he was speaking about um, if if we would take it before the season started, and I, I think all of us basically were like, yeah, probably like we it, it, we would like we we would, we would take seven out of nine. That's that's okay. One of my questions I had for you guys is what's worried you? And I think that's what Fahi is about to allude to. It's the lack of options that we have on our bench. So far, I will start with you. What has worried you so far this season, three games in? Bro, the lack of options on the fucking bench. Like, <laughs> I don't know what more to say. Like, this has been the problem since June. This is what I've been saying. This is what a lot of us have been saying. The quality in depth is shit. We've got players there that have done well for us in the past, but times have changed. You know, football has changed in the last couple of years. Better teams are getting there now. And I just don't feel as if our quality in depth is there. And I don't think Klopp trusts all the players that he has in his squad. Now, people can talk about how Klopp has full autonomy over the squad and he picks and chooses who stays and who goes. I just don't think that's the case. I really don't think that's the case. I think he's being forced to keep some of these players because we can't get a good fee for them. I think that's I think that's pretty obvious with Divock Origi. Um, obviously, right now, as we're speaking, he's still at the club. Um, I think there are a couple of other players that he Lawrence really doesn't. Carriers. Hmm? Loris Carius. I don't know why that bloke's still at the club. Um, again, he, he's a non-entity. He doesn't really count. Like we're, we're not going to see that guy touch it, um, wear a Liverpool jersey ever again. Um, there, I just think there's a few players that Klopp doesn't trust ultimately. And um, that that's my worry for the season. Because again, now Firmino's injured, right? Um, they're saying that on initial thoughts or initial scans that they've done, it doesn't seem as if that's too bad. Now, I've heard this story a lot. You've all heard this story a lot, where they say initial fears are, you know, it's not too bad, it'll be all right. But then it ends up being two months. In that two-month period, we're going to have about 13 games. So are you saying for the 13 games, we're going to play the same front three every single game? But what is the depth here? What, Origi off the bench? The same guy that Klopp hasn't trusted since January and this season. Last season, sorry. Like, 
this is my issue. Like, we do not have the options. Mid centre mid, cool. You can have an argument and be like, you know what? We've got about six, seven lads that you can kind of switch around. Fine, I'll take the midfield one. But up front, we do not have the options needed to challenge properly and confidently. I think a lot of this is reliant on Klopp's brilliance rather than the brilliance of the squad. I agree. That's all I can say. I agree. Ellis, I'm keen to hear your thoughts on this. Because if you guys are not privy to this information, like like I was saying, at, right right at the top of the pod, I was, I was saying to you guys, join our patron. You will not be disappointed. We do have a saga going on. It's the Company Men versus NWO. It stands for New World Order. So in, in other words, they are they are looking for a change. Things things to happen. Things things to improve. Things to get better. So I will. And and then this is part of the company, men. They're like, oh, I'm kind of happy to accept things the way they are. The people who are in charge know what to do. They know what they're doing. Fahi and I want I can't say Chris, Chris that haircut is, is 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 giving me a bit of an NWO kind of vibe. So I'll say Chris ish. Chris ish. I did that. Um, is is a bit more on the more on the NWO side. But I say all of that to say this, Ellis. What are you? What has worried you so far this season? Is it just like what Fahi said, or is it anything else? Or um, nothing at all. Yeah, I would like another forward. I would like a one-on-one player against teams like Chelsea, who's looking to get at the fullback. Um, if that player isn't out there for what Liverpool want, then that's on them, isn't it? Um, I'm more of yeah. I'll wait till eleven o'clock tonight. Then I'll rant if I have to rant. If it's so be it, but I can't. That like, I can't keep on going over the same thing over and over again because it just jars me. Like it's like they're gonna have to. They've made their bed, so they're gonna have to lie in it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it gets to January and they're, they're fucked, then that's on them. They have to find it. I, like, it's like when we didn't sign a centre-back. I understood the premise of it, but come January 1st, you're supposed to sign that centre-back because we was at our wits' end. So then they had to lie in. So the form from January to February, that's on them, isn't it? Because January 1st, you knew that you ain't got centre-backs. Go and get a centre-back. But things like, again, if it comes to January... We have no forwards, then again, that's on them. So I can't really say, oh, well, FSG this, if it's some kind of like in the middle. They've done what they've done. They've got us a league title. They've got us a Champions League. They've made us one of the best teams in the, in Europe over the last couple of seasons. So that's why I give them their slap. Anything else is, is whatever. But um, in, in regards to, to options on the bench, in hindsight, maybe maybe Harvey shouldn't start it. Maybe you, you start your navigator and you leave Hendo on the right hand side. You put people where they can play. Um, you never know. We could have had a, probably a better game. We could have ended up winning the game because everything would be balanced. The problem we had on Saturday was that it was a bit too unbalanced, and everyone tried to do the same thing. So that's all coming into the middle, and you're coming against a team who's strong in the middle. So if we probably had our left hand side, so if that's Naby Keita, um drifting out wide to to make it a bit bigger and get Henderson drifting out wide to make the pitch a bit bigger. Maybe we have a different result. So I'll see how the season goes, see until like January, see where we are. People like Divock Origi are wasting their time. They need to get out of the club. Um, I would like to see Minamino get a chance. Um, if he even got like 15 minutes, let's see what he's on. If he's not on anything, then get him out of there. Like you're not really showing us anything. Um, it was unfortunate. In the gulag, yeah? And then if that's it. That's that's only got fifteen minutes, yeah. Well, at least uh, I'm not gonna say obviously it's not dependent, but at least fifteen minutes here and there, and I can see a little little something because preseason looked decent. I'm not gonna lie, preseason looked good. Um, so did morning. Yes, exactly. There we go. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's true. Um, <laughs> I'm that is true. Uh, but um, again, Jota was there any need for Firmino? I I think Jota should have started. Um, these are the little things that Klopp does. I think Julian was alluding to last season. He makes a few mistakes or a few decisions, a bit like oh, you could have done a bit different. So I'll just say, I want to see, I want to get, let's get to January, see how it goes. Um, that's when they have to uh, eat their pepper soup. So yeah. it sounds like, Ellis, so it sounds like nothing has worried you so far. No, because on the grand scheme of things, we've got seven out of nine points in games against a competitive Chelsea. We've beat up Norwich, we've beat up Burnley. Um, Last season, Burnley came here and beat us up. I was saying last season, Fulham came to our eyes and beat us up. We got a drop at Fulham. So, on a, in the grand scheme of things, if you don't dig deeper, it's, like it's been calm, in it? It's, it's a normal start. Obviously, when you start going into partic- the particulars about 
the squad and how we're playing, what we look like, then maybe you can say, oh, you need a few players like Mane to step up a bit. Or hopefully for me, no, the injury's not too bad. Um, Van, you, do you know what I mean? It's just a little, little things. But in the grand scheme of things, I think we've, we've started okay. I'm going to give it 10 games, then we'll see what's going on. Cool. Chris, I'll ask you the same question. Three games in, seven out of nine points. What's worried you, if anything? Um, I'm, I'm I'm happy with the seven points in it, but after, yeah, after after Saturday's game, it very much just feel like two push drop. So you really kind of feel like nah, you've missed the chance to edge out a title rival. I think Fahey put it quite well earlier. Most alarming thing is that there's just no kind of movement or any inkling that we'll get another attacker in. Um to end the window and it's one of the things that we desperately need um you know i'm all for give him minimino minutes but the guy who got sent on loan last season southampton because he wasn't obviously trusted so i don't i'm gonna say the transfer things still later on but i don't particularly know why the guy is still here and being touted as a rotational option when he got sent on loan to Southampton because there was clearly no they, they clearly they looked at the squad and evaluated and said you know what we could do about this guy during this intense, crucial period where a lot of people weren't scoring and weren't creating chances. They thought, okay, cool, we can sanction this. This guy can leave. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's just alarming that we've not got an extra attacker in. And if it was all hanging on Divock Origi, like Elle said, I can't see how people are confident in having Origi as an option. The guy's not even been in match day squads recently. Klopp has told him, I think Klopp has basically said in the nicest way how, um, not including what happened to Mamadou Sako because, you know, things obviously happened there behind the scenes. He's basically said, can you fucking leave? <laughs> we, need you, we need you to leave just so we can do stuff um, in the nicest way possible. But the guy obviously wants to stay. He's comfortable. And, uh, you know, fair play. Fair play to him. You know, well, I I paid. Think, you know what? Be, be a bit fair to Riga, though. If I'm settled somewhere and I don't want to leave... Yeah, I'm not, 100k a week. You want to keep it? Bro, I'm not going to leave, in it. You know what I mean? Um, I, didn't, I didn't ask for the contract. Like you gave it to me, so exactly, it. exactly, it's, man. Like, no, and it's on the club. Isn't it? It's on the club. End of the day, it's on the club. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because we're, we're going to be in the exact same cycle. Um, if he doesn't get sold in the next eighteen months, we're not Phillips. We're going to see. Listen, well, why I'm is not going to lie. After we won the league, I think it was clear as day that Origi was not going to contribute much anymore. Mm. I think he achieved what he needed to achieve. You, you gave him a new bumper contract after the Champions League win because you thought, you know what, there's still something there. Let's try and retain his value. Let's see if we can build him up even further. You saw the following season, that's not going to happen. That's when you should have got rid. We didn't get rid and now we're suffering for it. Cool, whatever. Origi, you can stay. But ultimately, the, the 15 to 20 mil that we could have tried to get, we're now not getting. We're now trying to hold off on these stupid God. bids that, that no one's going to put in. So, like, it's one Bro, thing I've, what, I've what, seen a lot of fans. Wolves are confident. Mm. Wolves, Wolves are more than confident in taking Kiefer Moore as their mm. striking option as opposed to Origi. Mm. When that happens, you need to kind of sit there and evaluate things and say, okay, cool, my career is just stalled. There's it, someone's it, it, I, that's a big man that even I wouldn't take, and I like my mobile big man, pause. Um, but yeah, it's that it's it's a bit of a mess from that point of view because I, I'm not I'm not even gonna use the weekend is an example because I think Chelsea just played really well. But you can see and you can see the benefits of an attacker who can take on someone and allow the space behind the defender, which was one of the things we massively lacked. So we were looking for Salah to get behind and get him in between the in between the sticks and we couldn't do that. And you can see that, that that's going to be a problem when people set up for low block. So yeah, the lack of attacker is is massive alarming. It is you know, massively alarming for me. Yeah, for, for me, it's... I so, yeah, for me, it's not even that like, at one point I was sort of, yeah, we need a mobile number nine, but then I'm thinking we actually need someone who can take on defenders. We, we, we don't have that. They haven't got anyone you know with speed. No, yeah, no one's got post moves. No one's got post yeah, exactly. moves no more. Nobody can, like, there's no, no, no like, post moves. Bro, 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 I saw, I saw Rafinha dappy up, what was it? What's his name? Taylor. Charlie Taylor. Against, yeah, yeah. Oh my, yo, honestly, yeah, and I'm, like I'm a, I'm never gonna say pause. Honestly, my mouth was—I was drooling at the prospect of him at our club. Bro. <laughs> he looked—it just 
honestly, a one v one beat. Do you know? Do you know how? Do you know how key that is? Like, and that's and and and, and then I saw what Mane did. Not, well, sorry, I saw what Mane did the day before, and I compared it to Rafinha. I was like, damn, like this is this is the man I used to know and love. We don't have that anymore. It's unfortunate, man. It's, and that's what, what you should be looking to get. That's what you should be what's, looking to get. What's most alarming for me is that we keep making the same mistakes. So let's forget the transfer just, just for a moment because for some reason, people are happy the way the squad is now. I, I can't tell you. It's, it can't be for footballing reasons. That that's for sure. But people are happy with the squad is now. But let's just talk about on, on the pitch. We're still doing the same things that, that resulted in, in zero success for us last season. Like, namely, the... the the, the in swinging crosses to our to our five foot five percent of forwards. Why don't we have any variation? Why are we not trying anything different? If you want to keep the players that we have, okay, cool. You can literally instruct, you can instruct them to do different things. No, we can move players around. Our forwards they're not even intertwining anymore. Why why is Salah not going to why Salah not going up front and, and Jaw going to the left and Marley going to the right and just give people something a bit different to think about? Why is none of that happening? That's what's frustrating um to me. That's what's most worrying to me but let's try and be a bit positive because it's not the end of the world right it actually is not the end of the world right now so i'm going to flip the question for you want to go first what's excited you the most so far this season just just seeing van dyke back man pause it's just it's just nice to see my favorite my favorite one of my favorite players at the club back he i, I think obviously first two games he looked a little bit shaky you know getting back into the swing of things you know, it didn't seem like he, his recovery pace was there or anything like that. But against Chelsea, I really enjoyed watching him play. Um, I wasn't too worried with him against Lukaku. I think he was really up for the challenge. Um, I think, Harold, obviously, I saw you the week before, and, we, and Ellis as well, we were talking about it. And we were a little bit worried, and we were like, oh, you know what, Lukaku versus Van Dijk is going to be a bit of a, a myth. Um, but really and truly, like, Van Dijk held his own, so it didn't matter, big him up. But um, Van Dijk held his own. And yeah, I'm just excited to see how he how he gets on this season. I, I think Touchwood, things should be all good. Um, the worries that I had previously, the worries some of us had previously about him getting back into the routine of things, um, I, I think that should be all good. That's one exciting thing. Another exciting thing is young Harvey Elliott um, coming through. You know, um, we weren't sure where he what his position was going to be this season, but it looks like Klopp wants to put him in midfield. And really, truly, he's done he's done well against Chelsea. He was good. Um, against against Chelsea, no matter what you say, he he didn't hide. Um, he, he I think he had the most touches from all the Liverpool players. It's either him or Trent, um, one one of the two. But yeah, he he was good against Chelsea. He was great against Burnley, and yeah, I'm excited to see how he does this season as well. So th those are two plus points. Um, aside from the complaints that I have, and I'll ask you a follow up question: Have your has your have your initial projections on where we finish in the league changed based on the first three games? No, because I, I said we title challenge that, I, I, and I've not gone against that. Like, the thing is, I've been moaning for I personally think for 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 valid reasons, but I have always maintained that we would still challenge because I do believe in the squad, um, I do believe in the coach. My my issue has just been I, I think we could have strengthened more. I think we've just been lazy on it. Um, so yeah, my my projections haven't changed. I think we're going to title challenge. Um, I'm not like super confident that we're going to win it, but I do think we will challenge. Cool, Chris. I'll ask. I'll ask you next. Um, what's What's excited you most um, about the three games so far that we've played? And I'll ask you that follow question as well after. Yeah, I think um, it's hard not to get excited that it took you know two hundred and seventy minutes of football for Van Dijk to basically reaffirm himself as the greatest central defender in world football. I mean, uh, it was just good. It's just good to see that he's not lost any of the pace. He still looks as good as ever. Um, and yeah, it's just exciting to see. Uh, I think the way that we're playing football is, is is quite nice. It doesn't feel as robotic recently. Um, obviously, it was you know really frustrating that kind of second half against Chelsea. But I think we're playing some you know we're playing some really good stuff. Um, and I'm really excited by the fact that you know Jota can operate as a as a number nine. I mean that's the most important thing for me. Um, you've got a guy who can come off the left. who can play players in line two, and that positional versatility is is so massively key. Um, for being able to do for do a job in this Liverpool team, you know, uh, I'm, you know, you, you've got a guy there who can make up a deficit of some of the goals that we missed last season whilst he was injured, and that's massively encouraging. So, you know, whatever Mane can't make up for, I'm very confident the Jota will kind of get those goals as well. Cool. And do you have any of your initial projections where we finish in the league change 
based on the first three games? No, not not really. Um, if this Liverpool team can, it will find a way. Um, <laughs> Saturday, Saturday aside, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's a team that look capable of getting over, you know, eighty five points and being in the hunt. Whether it can sustain that run that's needed to kind of reaffirm yourself as champions, as it's been needed in this league for the past you know four seasons, that's going to be seen. But it's a good it's a good core group of players who know the mission and they know what they need to get to get there. And you know they, that's that's not changed. Els, I'll come to you as well. What what's excited you most uh, so far this yeah. season? Yeah, um, probably jumping hot on um, Fahey's um, point in regards to Harvey Elliott. I like him. He's a breath of fresh air, good young, confident player. He looks like he, ha- he has something to offer this season in the squad, and also he looks like um, he wants to try and maintain his maintain his place in the team. So it's nice to see that young players take that opportunity. Also, again. I wasn't I wasn't really sold on Jota as a centre forward, but then I think um Fahi made a point and one of my other friends made a point as in he's because we're so used to Bobby playing as a number nine and like dropping off and doing all what he does. It was just different for me to see like a proper number nine who's looking to get him behind. So I want to see how that how that um develops. So I'm I'm kinda of looking forward to that again. Van Dyke. Yeah, I like that man. Big VVD. Um, initial thoughts. Not initial thoughts, sorry. Uh, I know wow. your projections haven't changed, Ellis. I don't yeah. even need to ask you this question, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, At least you know, bro. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I, know you, I know you well enough. Okay, cool. So that's that out of the way. Let's 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 get into some some more some more eternal affairs um at Liverpool Football Club, including some of our what, what was it? The 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 dinner lady, Fahi, is that is bro, that the bro, <laughs> Big up Carol, man. Big up big Carol. Carol. Carol's got her own poster. <laughs> okay, great. Wait, before before we get into, before, before we chat about Carol and the transfer window, Jordan Henderson, our captain, has um, agreed a brand new uh, contract with with Liverpool. Um, his current deal ran on to twenty twenty three, so that's been a two year extension. So meaning that his new contract would, would it would uh, leave his time here up until at least twenty twenty five. Um, potentially taking his time at the club up until up to fourteen years, which is which is incredible actually. Now now, now I actually think about it and I've said it out loud. Um, Alex, I'm going to come to you first on this because I know what you're going to tell me because because I, 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 I can't I can't wait for you to say it. Was, was did that deal sound about right to you? Or no, too long, too little. It is at first. Yeah, everyone was like, oh, it's four years." I was like, "Whoa." <laughs> that is ridiculous. <laughs> I was a bit nuts. But then obviously he had he already had two years left and his additional two years. Um fam, he's always injured, man. He's always injured, but then then again, he's inspirational, he's a captain. Does he still has something to offer? Are you laughing for far you The first thing you said was inspirational. Fucking hell, I hate. <laughs> No, but he is. Uh, you can't. You can't. You can't say that he isn't, man. He, he does make a difference, man. He keep, but I'm not gonna lie. He's, he's still a good player, isn't it? He said the only problem he with is. it is, is that is that can he stay fit? Do you know what I'm saying? Like if he was uh, Van Alden, a genie, genie type of fitness, I'm like, right, fair enough. But he's someone that misses about 15 games a season in the league alone, and can we afford that at his wages? But I mean, he's only an extra two years. He's going to finish. He's, this is his last contract. I can't see him going anywhere else. He's going to call it a day. So, yeah, I'm happy. Let me not lie. I'm like, yeah, cool. It's whatever, isn't it, man? That's, that's the answer <laughs> I definitely wanted to hear. Um, Chris, <laughs> I'll ask you as well. Uh, thoughts, thoughts on that new, that new deal for um, Captain Hendo? Um, he played a blinder, didn't he, really? PR. <laughs> um, you know. Yeah, I was going to make a joke there, but let me not make it. Um, given current climates, uh, yeah, um, clever PR. He's basically forced the club's hand, and then the club have gone. Yeah, we'll announce it on deadline day when everyone else is already pissed. So you know, there you go. That's what you get for you know trying these tactics, which I thought was really nasty. To be fair, <laughs> yeah. like, club captain, you know, can't can't be doing these type of things. Um, but no, I'm 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 content with it. Um, he's the club captain. He should be here for the remainder of his career. career. Um, 
it, it does raise the question though when you've like you know L said when you're letting one album leave on you know aging concerns and will his body hold up for durability pause when you've got Hendo who's been injury prone in the last few seasons it's, it's pretty hard to justify but yeah I'm, I'm i'm glad he's here he does a lot of good um you know <laughs> he's he's a good lad does a lot of good work on the pitch and off the pitch so yeah man i'm i'm, I'm okay with it as long as it doesn't you know block progression for other things i'm, I'm okay with it yeah agreed um fine i'm not even gonna ask you about it because i'd rather go straight into our our, our transfer chat i, I want to save a bit more time for it i mean what on earth have we spoke about this what haven't we spoke about this transfer window so far but it's coming to an end. It's not like anything's happening. I'm checking my watch. Tick tack, as, as far he would say. I think there's like an hour and is it was it sorry, two hours and fifteen minutes left until the window closes as we're currently speaking. Um, we've had the likes of just just one signing coming in, apart from the, some, some loans that ended. We had Kanate came in, that's that's our only signing. Um, we had the likes of Marco Gruwich leave, uh Jean and Shakiri, um, Jorginho Wijnaldum, Harry Wilson, um our knee, et cetera, et cetera. Loads of these, all of these players have now left Liverpool. We've already had one signing. Um, Fahi, if you had to rate this transfer window out of 10, um, so from numbers from zero to 10, mind you, yeah. what, what number would you rate it? And just and let me know your overall thoughts on, on the transfer window. Okay, so all right, I'm going to be sensible. We, I wanted us to um, sort out three positions. Centre-back, Midfield and up front. We've done one of the three. Am I happy with the one that we have signed? Yes. I wanted Kanate. Absolutely fine. But I don't think the centre-back position was as big of a worry for me after how well Nat Phillips did last season, right, compared to the forward position. I really wanted us to sign another forward first. I think that was my biggest worry. Um... Talking about this transfer window, are we also talking about the outgoings? We are, right? The in- Everything that encompasses Everything. It. Everything. Including, All right. Including so, Carol. If you're basing it off outgoings and incomings, it's a 2 out of 10 window. And even 2 out of 10 is me being generous. Because ultimately, there are still players here that we have been trying to get rid of since 2018. That That's it. I don't know what more to say. For some reason... We have ended up in profit, this transfer window. We've ended up in profit. My net spend is lower than Liverpool's. <laughs> How has this happened? I don't understand. I, 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 for, why are we in profit and what are we going to do with that money? That's what I want to know. Where is that money going? If, does that money get carried over to January? What happens to January's money? Does that get carried over to next June? Like, where is, where is this money going? Or is that for the contract extensions? But, but, uh, funny, I, I just want to know, because everyone seems dumbfounded. No one really knows. Why are we offering four-year deals when our, our strategy for 30-plus players is three years? So does that now mean that strategy is now broken? I, I want Hendo to stay, by the way. That's not my problem. But so what? Have we just broken everything now? So in terms of the strategy that we have in place, the way Moneyball works, what's happened with that? Can well, I ask a question, I, I, Yeah, go on. Are you currently standing up? Yeah, I'm on a standing desk. Guys, Fahi, can you imagine... Standing for about an hour. We've been recording for an hour so far. Fahi is stand has been standing for the entire duration of this podcast. He is irate. I, <laughs> what is this you? I, I just don't understand. I just don't understand how you can defend this shit. I I really, for the life of me, cannot understand how you can defend this shit. They've got two hours eleven minutes to bring in someone to help out on that bench. I'm not asking for a world class player. I'm asking for someone that can actually help Klopp. And yeah, th- th- this window has been probably one of the worst windows we have had since, since we Roy, Hodgson Roy Hodgson summer. Roy Hodgson summer. Even though he signed quite a few players, that was a fucking terrible window. Jovanovic, Paulson, Joe Cole, 
Um, who's that Scottish geezer, the centre back, Danny Wilson? No, that, but that was Benitez though. That was Benitez. Was that, was yeah, but Hodgson's the one that held up the shirt with him, isn't it? Yeah. So, so that's his window, man. Chris, is, is, is everything okay? Legit. Uh, it's, it's one of the worst windows we've had in like 10 years. I'm getting PTSD, man. Bro, like, and again, this doesn't mean that I don't believe in the team and I don't want them to do well and I don't think we're going to do well. I think we're going to do great. But if we, if we sum up what has happened this summer, all the hopes and dreams we had, all the stories we were told, all the dreams we were sold, none of that has happened. We just, we've got the same old discussion. And in January, me and Ellis are going to go at it again. And it's fucking boring. It is boring. I don't want to debate with this man. I hate debating with Ellis. He's like an uncle. He's, he's, he's arrogant. He doesn't listen. He just keeps saying the same old things and he shrugs his shoulders. That's all he does. But it's going to happen again in January. And it's going to happen again in June. Because I, I proper don't understand what is going on anymore at this club, man. I, for the life of me. Do not understand what is going on. Okay. Um before before I try and try and get some sort of positivity out of it, Chris, I I'm gonna come to you because I feel like you are very balanced and very level-headed. Not to say that you're not Fahi, but you're a very balanced um individual, especially when it comes to FSG. Uh formerly part of the company, man. Uh current <laughs> current um position is is still up for debate. What 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 would you rate? What, what, what would you rate this transfer window out of ten? And where where does the lack of signings leave us? Share your thoughts. Um, I'm I'm, I'm glad you said that, Harold. I mean, you guys all know me. I'm a fairly I'm a fairly optimistic person. I like to you know not jump to conclusions. Like to look at look at things and you know make my conclusion towards the end of stuff. Um, yeah. Again, I'm really optimistic. I'm willing to give people chances. Um. But I'm left, I'm baffled. I am truly, truly baffled. And I'll tell you why. Let's, let's go on a little bit of a journey, shall we? Um, it's got a bit of a bit of a journey of what we've been what we've been sold this year. Memory lane. 13th of March 2021. Uh, reliable journalist James Pierce reports the athletic the reports for the athletic that money is available for Jurgen Klopp to strengthen his squad this summer. The club insists that the money is always there to be spent if the right player is identified. This was the case with the previous two windows too. Reportedly, reinforcements are now being prioritised at centre-half and centre-forward. Pierce adds that Klopp is particularly hopeful he will be allowed to freshen up his front three positions. Sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds really yeah. good. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, 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 go to the next, let's go to the next part. And this isn't a digger, you know, or any of the journalists, by the way. Because only George told. did it as well. All of them did it. Yep, everyone did it. The only examples I have are the ones that I've, I've, I've maybe able to dig up. <clears throat> 13th of April, 2021. There's not a crazy amount of money available, but Klopp will be able to spend a little freely in the summer. Again, from, from, from James Pierce. The Redbird investment will help Liverpool handle the effects of the pandemic, and it's not going to be sell to buy for the Reds. And we were also told that that Redbird investment would allow it to be business as usual. So business as usual would be, you know, looking to the market, finding these smart deals, or identifying the talents that we need to refresh the squad. Um, we should not expect any majorly expensive transfers. Fair, fair, you know what I mean? It, it, that's, it's always a nice thing. But as we know, if you can get two Jotters in this window, it would have been perfect. Uh, I jumped a little bit forward here. 2nd of April, 2021. Simon Hughes has been speaking on the latest instalment of the Blood Red podcast, where he revealed Liverpool's owners plan to back Jurgen Klopp financially this summer, no matter where they finish in the Premier League table. And we were told that Liverpool need to finish in these Champions League positions because it would affect the calibre of player we'd be able to attract this summer. Yep. August 4th, 2021. Sources close to the club have said Liverpool are already looking towards next summer when it comes to making additions to the squad. Do we look like morons? <laughs> We're all smart men, you know what I mean? And you can... Don't promise me... Don't promise me a diamond when you're going to give me shit. And I'm more annoyed for the fact that you've got, you've got one of the best managers in world football, if not the best manager in world football, and you're not backing him to the full extent, and you're also not backing the sporting director 
to do his job to the best of his ability. And obviously, it's come out that you know Michael Edwards might leave uh, when his contract runs up next summer. Michael Edwards is only good. Michael Edwards, you know, think of him as a chef. He's got all the tools available for him to cook up the best meal in the world, and he's done it before. Only when he gets the best fucking ingredients. You're asking him to make wagyu with fucking military rations. What's he supposed to do? Uh, um, the one thing I'm really sick of, like I've just said, is that narrative that we're always given the next summer is going to be the summer, next summer is going to be different. And now we're supposed to think that next summer is going to be any different. Uh, it, 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 it baffles me because one of the things that we've been talking about is this being the summer of opportunity. We've all talked about it. We've all seen the scope of European football. We've all seen you know, Inter Milan need money to pay off debts because, you know, They've been gambling more than Marco. Uh, France football is on the edge of fucking collapse. I mean, and we've done fuck all. It, it, it boggles the mind that a club that is so smart and ahead of the curve when it comes to finding the players and gems that they need has not brought anyone in. So where's that all come down to? You know where it all comes down to? If you need to sign, if you need to buy something in a work environment, you ask your boss to sign off your budget. Would you ask your boss to approve this in, in a PO or whatnot? Michael Edwards has probably identified these targets, but he's gone to his boss and they've said, nah, we'll see, we'll see. And then we're told about homegrown quotas. Uh, you know, we need, it, it, things will change, it'll be a bit more fluid if Shakiri and Nariri leave. The, if we can't shift the players, then what's the point? And like he said, it blows the whole sell to buy model out of the entire war if you can't offload the players. So there needs to be some form of investment from above to do the job. Um, I have drifted off the initial question, Harold, which what would I rate the transfer window out of 10? Um, I'll give it two out of 10 because you've identified one thing. You got it done early. Fair enough. It's a really good deal. But midfield, I'm not overly... I'm looking at it now. I'm not overly bothered about. If you can't buy, you know, a top quality midfielder, then that, that, that's, what, that's what it is. Now, the fact that you can't find a forward, any kind of forward, is very concerning. Because like we said, I, I don't think Mane's done, but it's not looking good. It's not looking good at all, is it? Like past 18 months, he looks physically drained, pause, and that is affecting his mental state as well. Because the things he, he's able to do on the pitch, he's not able to do them properly anymore. Bobby, as much as I love Bobby, has not been the same for, again, 24 months. And that kills me to say it. But what's the point when we're not going to replace the players? That that that's my rant over. I've been pushed to the point where I've had to deliver a rant on the pod that we do. The thing is, Harold, we we can we can break this down even further. But I, I'm very aware that we've been recording for an hour and seven minutes, so maybe we should save it for another time. But ultimately, I just want to add one thing: this our transfer philosophy and our tactics all rely on big sales. Now, if we're not able to get rid of players, it fucks us up. And this summer has proven it. Because we've not got rid of anyone of that stature, not a Coutinho, something along those lines, um, not a Suarez. Um, who else was there that we, we sold for, for a large amount of money? Sterling. 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 There you go. So th these kind of sales, because we're not able to do that right now, it's fucked us up completely. And one thing that... Um, a few of us mentioned last year, I, I kind of came to terms with it, um, was, you know, now that we are champions back then, and now that we've reached the pinnacle of where we wanted to be, you need to change tact. You need to kind of move differently now. You can't continue on with the same old strategy. And we've just decided to continue on with the same old strategy. And right now it's not looking good. Now let's see what happens at the end of the season, um, but it's not looking good. Yeah, you know what, I, I was, I was before you go. I'm, I'm gonna, I'll, sh I'll share my thoughts on it. Um, the biggest, in, the biggest annoyance I, I have is, um, similar to what Chris has said. Well, one part of it is that the fact that I keep saying next season, next season. I don't know what they're drip feeding these, um, these journalists, but they just keep leaving us on, and they think that we are children. It's gonna, just gonna keep on like keep going for the for the next piece of candy or or whatever it just doesn't work what's annoying me was where we've come from 
Fahi's gave us like this timeline in the past. And when I really thought about it, I was like, this is so frustrating. We've come from a time where we had to keep, had to be this self-sufficient club. And we did all of that. We've, did, we've done all of it. We win administration. You saved us. Well, thank you so much, FSG. We've, we've done all of this to get to the, the pinnacle of being champions of Europe and then champions of, champions of England. And now where you, where you were promised us that, okay, things would change now, that we are, we are we're, we're top of the pops and we can attract the best talent in the world, you'd think that would change. It wouldn't just be a business. It would now be a football club where you're seeking to, to create a dynasty, which I think this is all of what we, we really desire. We've grown, we all grew up in a very similar era where we saw Manchester United win league titles and league titles and league titles and Champions Leagues as well as Chelsea um, and, and so on. We've seen, we want to create our very own dynasty. Like we, unfortunately we, we, we're, we're not like the actual uncles of our, of our, of our Coppin group. We didn't get to see the dynasties of the seventies and the eighties. We didn't get to see any of that. So this, 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 this is what we want. And it's frustrating me that now we have the tools to be such great, such a great, great team. We're not capitalized on it. That's what frustrates me. Um, what, what, what frustrates me even more is I can't break this bond. No matter what I do, no matter how much they annoy me, Every Saturday they, they play football. I watch them with my whole heart and it jars me because I cannot separate it. It kills me. It's, it's, this club is the death of me in, in more ways than one. And we sound, I know I'm sounding so dramatic because we're not, we're not anywhere near it that bad. But I just wish we no, it, capitalize. It's, it's, it's like the mafia. Once you're in, you can't get out. Literally, like you literally cannot get out. I don't know what they've done. I don't know what's going on. Like it affects me. Like day to day. Like I w- I woke up on Sunday morning rattled. Like what? Why am I on Sunday morning? I-, I was getting ready to go to church. I was thinking about Liverpool versus Chelsea. We just played. Like I was rattled. Like my my mind was gone. It was my four year anniversary with my girlfriend. My mind was gone. Rattled. I wasn't even thinking about what she was saying. I was like, why are you asking me about what I love so much about you? Liverpool just drew. Like I'm rattled. Like it's anyway, anyway, I'll stop there. Ellis, I'll ask you the same question. And for my rating, it would be a two out of ten as well. But Ellis, I'll ask you what assuming now we don't sign any players, right? So we, we got an hour and 58 minutes to the windows are over, right? Assuming we don't sign any players else. This this squad is exactly what it is as we're speaking. What are your thoughts on this transfer window and what are your and what is your rating out of ten for it? Um it hasn't been a good transfer window. Because obviously they saw a need at centre back, and we also the need at centre back. You have a man like Matip who rarely stays fit. Gomez and Van Dijk are coming back from long term injuries, so I think the Konate the Konate deal was supposed to be done anyway from last season, but for whatever reason they didn't do it. Um, January they wanted to wait till summer, so that's probably why it's been done very very quickly because it's already something they had in the pipeline. Um. What I will agree with is that we do, we do want a forward, and we, from all all the, uh, all the stories that was coming out, was linked with various forwards. So obviously, when you're linked with various positions, i.e. midfield and forward, that means that you, you're looking for it. Um, because it is what we needed, and we can't go into the season with just like Mane, Mane and Salah. Do you know what I'm saying? I think you cut off for a bit there, Elsie. Do, um, do you mind, mind saying that last sentence yeah. again? It's God shutting off his internet because we don't want to hear him That's justify right. this nonsense. You need to, you need to Big up God. need man. to do something different. And like, like Fahi was saying, they need to change the tact. So if, for instance, you can't get what you want to get, you have to be a bit more assertive and just push it. You are All right. Well, no, while 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 else sorts out his technical oh, difficulty, I think he was. I think it's basically agreeing. Yeah, with yeah what, we heard. We, we, yeah, we, 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 yeah. Come back, come back. Yeah, was, yeah. We, we we can hear you. Yeah, go on. Yeah, go on yeah, yeah, the field was all freezing. It was all freezing. My bad. Yeah. So before, obviously, let me not rant on. But yeah, we need to change the tact. If you want to be aggressive in the transfer market, just be aggressive. Then loan Liverpool the money. Then you're gonna get it back anyway because you're in Champions League, and you're in whatever. So you're gonna get that money back. So just be a bit more aggressive with that. Um. Again, obviously, I'm not really doom and gloom like that, but at the same time, I'm not. I mean, obviously, because we're company men, so everyone thinks, oh, well, FSG in, but I'm not. I'm just in the middle, really. Is that whatever they are, they're going to have to, you know, make their bed and they're going to lie in it. And 
wherever you pick your poison, that's what you have to take. So we're going to get to January. If Liverpool are fucked, then they're fucked in it. So they have to find a way to get about it. But we'll see, man. We'll see what goes on. I just don't want us to be in the same position that we were back back in the in the early tens, late noughties. I just, I just, I just don't want to. We see won't, that. And, and, and we yeah. won't have. But one thing I will say is, we will look back at Klopp's tenure at this club, and we will be like, I wish we they backed him more. Hundred percent. We'll be like, I wish the club backed Jurgen Klopp more, because we, we will now never know at our peak what we really could have done with just a bit more investment. Correct. We'll never know. Correct. And like. The fact that we were even, you know, briefed, you know, Liverpool being very frugal in the transfer market because they were putting money away to sign a generational talent. Just don't say things like that when it's not going to happen because... It's the hope that kills us. It's it's the hope that kills you. And I think, uh, you know, I tweeted this from the account last week as well. Bro, anyone on the internet that claims they know about transfers and stuff, just ignore them, man, because it gets your hope up and it will kill you. We've been linked to like what forty players to transfer window. We signed one. <laughs> we signed one. That's and that, and that was something that David Ornstein broke when no one else had it. So just ignore the noise and only focus on the official stuff. Because if you keep focusing on, like, let's take Saul for an example. Ever since July, people have been like, "Oh, Saul, 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 Saul. Yeah, we're gonna get Saul. He's gonna come into this midfield stuff." Bro, Saul don't really help us that much. You just got the idea of Saul in your head because he's a transfer, and the way we're conditioned now is to have transfers be the be all and end all thing of, of things. Obviously, he's going to go to Chelsea, and people are going to have a massive mouth down that he's now going to go to Chelsea, not being at Liverpool, even though we're probably never that interested in getting him in the first place. But yeah, yeah, we're not just a football podcast. As as you can see, Chris is here. Uh, giving you help for any of your psych- psychiatric needs that 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 Liverpool <laughs> may. Chris Liverpool cares, man. Chris cares. Chris, you know I mean? Chris, Chris cares. So I, I echo his comments. <clears throat> Be selective about who you listen to. I want to ask one more question before we do close. I'm going to ask you guys, what do we win this season? So I'm going to ask all of you one by one. You can say nothing. You can name the trophy. Farhe, I'm going to start with you. I think of the two, you're more likely to win the Champions League with this squad than you are the Premier League, um, purely because of knockout competition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. On our day, with, with the crowd back at Anfield, um, feel COVID free to thing. include the League Cup and FA Cup. I'm fine. Yeah, now nah, we're not going to do well in that shit um, because ultimately Klopp doesn't care about those dead trophies. But yeah, I think of of the two that you know we're going to be in, I would say the Champions League. I, I think we finished second in the Premier League. Um, I think we'll, we'll be there or thereabouts, but I think Champions League is more likely. Do you, do you think we win it? Not not about likeliness. Do you think we win the Champions League? No, I don't. I there don't. But if, there, if there was a, if there was one that I'm swaying to, it'd be the Champions League. But I don't think we do win it. Cool, Chris. Same question. Uh, Champions League. It's better look at the draw, isn't it? Really. Um, Ask me the same question when it comes to the quarterfinals if we're in it. Okay, fine. Um, that's one hill I'll always die on. Uh, league, yeah, I, I think I think we'll win the league mainly because we've got a group of players from last season, especially that are disappointed about how it went. Um, crowd back at Anfield. It's the same squad that you know broke a points barrier, um, and he's capable of getting those amount of points. Um, but even if we don't win it, we'll be there or thereabouts. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic that we can win the league. Cool. Um, I don't think we win anything, unfortunately. That's fair. It hurts me so much to say. Um, I've got a faint hope that we... Actually, you know what? No, you know, no, no. That's a lie. No, Harold. No, we win the league. You win the league, yeah? I'm going to regret saying this. But I say we win the league. I I can't accept that this group of players don't win another trophy. I just cannot accept it. So you know what, Chris? I'm backing you. Sticking my neck out, we're going to win the league. Ellis, I have a feeling you agree with that because you, you said we're going to get 99 points. So I'd like to think 99 points wins the league, right? And I haven't, and yeah? I haven't changed. Yeah? You haven't changed. Okay, good to hear. Do you, think we, win any, do you think we win anything more than the champ- anything more than the Premier League? 
No, no, just the league. Just the league. Cool. All right. Awesome. So far, he w- thinks we win nothing. The rest of us think we win the league. That is cool. Fine. All right. Here's where we are. Guys, th- this has been Coffin and Fraka. It's been an interesting podcast. I feel like it's been fairly negative, but I think it's just we're we're just realists like and i think the current state of play is that although we have a fantastic team and 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 a world-class manager we feel like the resources are not being utilized in the best way possible so we're just trying to allude to those things and understand the reasons why but at the end of the day we all support we all support the red men and we'll be fully backing them regardless of what happens in the last Yo, the window is done now man every week we're going to be po- we're going to look forward to each game we're, we're going to yeah. try and do our thing you know um, absolutely it is what it is. The window is a cancer in itself in football. It's one of those things that kind of takes away from the joy of the game that we love. Um, but now that it's closed, you know, we deal with what we've got and we move forward. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. All right. On, on that note, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We do have some great Patreon content coming out. Company Men versus um, NWO. We got a, we got, we have a weekend preview for next week. Obviously, there's an international break this week. But... Um, most excitingly, we have our cross pod live. Fahi wants to say one thing, so yeah, get tuned in for that on Thursday. Fahi, go on. Harold, where do you sit on this company of men versus NWO? Find out. No, don't don't find out anywhere. Where, where do I sit? I am. I'm closer to um to your side to the okay, to the cool. to the NWO. I won't, I won't say I'm as drastic. I had a lot of the, the streets are on our side nonsense aimed at me a few weeks ago. I like I like to see this all change now. I don't think I'm the streets. I'm I'm a bold 27. Brother, you're the streets, man. Harold, you're so cool. <laughs> you wear you wear you wear the the grooviest clothes. All right, all right, guys. Th- thank you so, nice thank you so much. City, thank you so much. Thank you. Center. How about uh, Chris? Can, can you meet Fahi? <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for listening, <laughs> guys. <laughs> um, have have a fantastic um international break. I guess if you can. Um, our next our next fixture is Leeds away. So, um, yeah, up the Reds, um, we go again. And hopefully, hopefully this, this crop of players can, can do something amazing. Thank you so much, guys, and peace.